I said it before, and I will say it again. <laughs> we have a gem of a place right here in the CLE, the Baseball Heritage Museum. No doubt about it. The history, the memories, there's so much to learn and enjoy the experience, and we thought we'd give you a little taste of it today. You ready to go on a field trip? Let's do it. Take a look. The diverse history of baseball is very important because of the segregation of baseball in the early 1900s when African Americans played in the Negro Leagues, which started in 1920, were not allowed to play in uh, the major leagues, the American League, National League, so they started the Negro Leagues, and many Latino players played there too. And what was really kind of sad about the situation is it was the color of your skin, the tone of your skin. If you were light-skinned enough, that some players could play in the early 1900s, but anything medium to dark skin was a, a no-go. Got started in 1997 when Bob Zimmer, who had the family jewelry store on East 4th, downtown Cleveland, started uh, a Negro League player, Wilmer Fields. Kind of gave the inspiration to Bob Zimmer to begin the museum there, so he started in the family jewelry store, Sisser Jewelers, and from there, we went to the Colonial Arcade in the 2000s, and then we came here in uh, 2014 after the renovation of League Park was completed. People will find here at the museum as many artifacts from the League Park era, the late 1800s, early 1900s, when there was professional baseball played here, also professional football, college football played here, many artifacts, the seats, other uniforms, many autographed items. People are sometimes surprised by the extent of what is here at the museum, but has been a, an ongoing collection of artifacts over the years, because we've been here for 26 years, we've existed. Probably one of the most notable things is our Babe Ruth home run ball, number 436, that he hit here out into Lexington Avenue. Uh, in uh, 1928, and he autographed it, and for better or worse, other major league players have autographed in succeeding decades too, like Willie Mays, Hank Aaron, Bob Feller, and others. So that is a really unique artifact that we have that, uh, that hardly exists elsewhere. I think most significantly, the championships of, uh, the first and only championship here at Link Park in 1920, and then the uh, championship 1948, uh, which is just after they left League Park here, but it was the last championship of this current ball club. So we're celebrating, if you want to say that, 75 years since the last World Series championship for the current Cleveland Major League Ball Club. Well, in the early 1900s, there were mostly gentlemen that came, as opposed, not many uh, females uh, came, and they would be dressed up in their suits with their dress hats, uh, whether it be the straw hats and then uh, eventually the fedoras. And uh, as I said, they would be all dressed up, and it was kind of a, a more formal uh, setting. People can get involved with time, treasure, and talent time being volunteering for the museum, treasure, they could give monetarily or with artifacts, and talent to be able to donate their time, their unique skills in the way of maybe helping the museum. To join the museum, to be a member, uh, individuals, $15, uh, a couple, $25, a family, $40, and that gives you a uh, free entree to the museum and also a discount uh, at our museum shop. The museum is located in the Huff neighborhood on the east side of Cleveland at East 66 in Lexington. You know, we invite people to come here. We're open Thursday through Sunday, 9 to 3. We have many events going on, baseball games. Uh, there's authors that come here that put on events, and you will find it very interesting, very historic. We're, we're a, a gem when it comes to Cleveland and Northeast Ohio.